Hello VCV Rack Addicts. Today I have some good news for you guys. There is a really fantastic diatonic sequencer that you already have but just don't know it yet. It's available in pure vanilla VCV if you know where to look. Um, but before we go ahead, let me give you a quick demo. So let's start from building our own um, four-step diatonic sequencer. As you can see, I have a simple subtractive synthesizer here going through Valhalla Shimmer Reverb, nothing fancy. Um, in order to build this sequencer, we will start from this octaver, four of them. We will also need a switch. We connect all of them to a switch and we clock it from anything. It could be LFO, so I'm switching to square wave. Now what's going to happen now is as you can see I already have a sequencer here but the problem is the smallest interval you get is one octave so we need to shrink those intervals and it's fairly trivial with VCA. Um, you just need to divide 100 by 7 because I want to have a heptatonic scale and it will be around 14.28. As you can hear, it's not yet equal temperament um, and you can quickly fix it with a quantizer. And I'm trying to stay here with pure vanilla uh, modules so I'm using this really awkward uh, quantizer. Um, for th those of you who are not familiar, um, just remember it's upside down. So if this is my C, uh, this will be my D, E flat. Um, G, A flat, B flat, and I have a minor scale. Now, let's build something bigger. Um, we will need a bigger switch. Now, there are so many in, in VCV Rag, different packages. And uh, right here I'm going to show you one that is my favorite and I think for this purpose it's probably one of the best. The package is called 23 volts and the module is called switch N1. Now it's very easy to miss because it's such a small module. It's very compact but believe it or not it's actually switch that allows you to have up to 16 inputs. So the way you set this up is in Vanilla VC, I mean, you can use any any merge uh, from that different packages. I'm just trying to stay with vanilla as much as possible. Um, 
So now I'm merging these five steps into a polyphonic cable. I'm connecting this polyphonic cable over here. I'm going to grab a clock and I'm going to connect it over here and now I have a five-step sequencer. Now here's the, the, the absolutely amazing part and, and my favorite a thing about this um, sequencer. Let me actually uh, move this <laughs> over here because we will need more space. We want to build a 16 step sequencer. This switch detects size of the polyphony here, which means if we want to add another step, it's that simple. expand very quickly to something larger. And I think this will give us 16 steps. Now, this switch gives us some new possibilities. We can clock it differently backwards. It's a very interesting random mode, especially for smaller sequencers. Um, and you can also scan it with the CV input. So, Let's take a simple saw wave here. Now, this is something that we could achieve with, with regular clock. However, if we switch it to triangle wave, we have a pendulum mode. Yeah, we, we, we would probably need to reset it. Yeah. So it's pendulum mode now. Uh, and this pendulum mode could be also uh, have could also have an extra timing warp when we scan it with sine wave. Um, and if you take this concept further, even with a simple saw wave, what you could do here is. Um, Put a VCA, there's a little trick here. Put a VCA on the way, connect it to both in and, C, um, and CV input. Second voice. And obviously I could build myself another sequencer. However, there's a really nice and very elegant trick. I don't need another sequencer. I just need another switch with the same sequence. I'm gonna clock, I'm gonna clock it backwards actually and listen to what happens. So right now, I have a sequencer that plays forward and backward at the same time. Furthermore, 
maybe I could experiment with having one of them playing random notes. Interesting. If I clock one of them differently, so <laughs> as you can see now, I have I have a sequencer, I have a polymetric sequencer. sequencer might be. Imagine all the possibilities. You can kind of you can have you know multiple voices running the same sequence. Another example. Here I have a simple sequence, eight step sequence. And I'm going to get bored with it very quickly. So, let's randomize it. In Vanilla VCV, you can find a module called Random. It's a sample and hold. You can use any sample and hold module. I'm going to clock it with the same clock. And I'll decide which steps are supposed to be randomized in the sequence. wondering what would happen if we could have multiple sequencers crossing each other vertically and horizontally, just like crossword puzzle. Well, let's try. Right now you can hear only the top row. However, I already prepared two other sequencers that are clocked eight times slower. And here's where, where the magic happens. I'm going to connect the right one, bottom right, to just one step and listen what happens. Now the, the left one is five steps. Let's connect it to the first note of the sequence.
here's another idea. I have a simple sequence run for fun in uh, polymetric mode, so we tried that before. However, this time we have two more voices. Second row. One is bass. And we can connect, we can link that bass note with the first step of our sequence, like this. And I have another voice over here. Again. Linked to one of the steps 